creativity as you understand it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I think that creativity is something that, oh jeez. I'm gonna need a minute or so here. <laughs> Creativity to me is like, it's like my thought process almost. It's kind of just what I think on a day-to-day -day basis. If someone were to ask me to do something artistically, then I instantly come up with a picture in my head or an idea or just something. And to me, that would be creativity. Creativity, in my understanding, is a spontaneous feeling that can be conducted into like works of art, music, and other things. Creativity can be numbers, it can be letters, it can be pictures, it can be anything you want. Creativity is when somebody can show their uniqueness through things that they do throughout their lives. I feel like uh, creativity is just a unique way of uh, going about everyday life and figuring out how to accomplish tasks, whether that's art or music or just how you're gonna make breakfast that morning. Creativity. There are many different definitions, from a thought process to making breakfast. That is why it makes creativity so difficult to study. If we can't define it, how can we measure it? How can we improve it? So we came up with this definition um, that we think uh, fairly comprehensively reflects um, how most people implicitly have been studying creativity, even though very few people actually, again, define what they mean by creativity. Uh, and here it is. Creativity is the interaction among aptitude, process, and environment by which an individual or group produces a perceptible product that is both novel and useful as defined within a social context. When I set out to make this film, I wanted to explore what motivates people to be creative, and I particularly wanted to focus on student creativity and its roles in schools. Studies have shown that adult achievement is more tied to creativity than to intelligence test scores. To understand the phenomenon of creativity, I interviewed students to get their thoughts on creativity. A specific example of me being creative is my YouTube channel for one, just because most people don't really do that, in which it kind of makes me unique in a way. I do consider myself creative just because I try to do a lot of different things that are unique to me and that I try to make my own path in the sense that I don't like to follow necessarily what everyone else is doing. I really think everything is a creative endeavor because even like going to chess club, that's creative and finishing my math homework, that's creative because you develop your own way of doing things and that is creativity. I feel my most creative when I'm outside um, or surrounded by nature. I feel very inspired. And when I'm down in my room in the basement, uh, it's kind of closed off from the rest of the house. So it gives me time to think and to process some things and really get, you know, that creative juices flowing in my head. In order to fully investigate this topic, I also interviewed an unusually creative professional because James Kaufman found that motivation is multifaceted, contextual, and dynamic. Now, I feel like, you know, I use creativity in my job, I use creativity in improv, in writing, in shows, uh, but where I feel like I'm most creative in everyday life, and this is where I feel like a lot of people are creative and they may not even realize it, is just in raising kids. Uh, you have to be creative with raising kids or else you'll go insane, they'll go insane, and it just doesn't work. In the age of standardized testing and mandated curriculum, teachers feel the pressure to develop skills that are test specific. In that environment, the importance of creativity can easily be forgotten. I've never met a teacher who overtly wants to squash students' ideas. Typically it happens inadvertently when a student says something that's unexpected or unusual, and we as educators have our eyes focused on an instructional objective, and we fail to see the potential creativity in that unexpected idea. Can teachers still teach creativity in this testing culture? Research would suggest that it is not that simple, but is possible. 
In a recent study by John Batchelor, it was shown that teachers that have little opportunity for creativity in their curriculum choices lack the ability to facilitate creativity in their students. But before we examine creativity in schools, we must first understand creativity and motivation, which raises the question, are some people just born with creativity or can we learn it? I do believe that, uh, that people who are well known for the work that they've done in science, in the arts, uh, in, in music, in literature, in, in any field, I do believe that those people certainly exhibited a very high degree of creativity. But that doesn't mean that ordinary people who are never going to be famous can't be creative as well. It doesn't mean that children can't be creative. And I think really everyone is born creative. Uh, I think some people kind of feed that creativity and work on it their whole lives and you know, make a living out of doing things differently or uniquely, but, um, and then others maybe not as much, but I really do feel like everybody in everyday life has to be creative just to, to get through life, basically. I think that you are born with creative qualities, everyone is, but I also think that they can be like developed and further strengthened throughout your life. So, if everyone can learn to be creative, what motivates someone to be creative? My motivation comes from mainly boredom. If I'm bored, I'll probably, like, I need to, I always need to be, like, doing something. So one way is YouTube. I can easily pick up my phone to record or my camera or whatever. I think a lot of my motivation comes from simply just wanting to do more. I absolutely love putting a smile on people's faces. The motivation can be simply anything from just having a task to accomplish or it can be something that you yourself want to pursue. We understand that motivation and creativity go hand in hand. You're going to be very unlikely to come up with a creative idea or solution to a problem if you're not intrinsically motivated, if you're not engaged in that problem solving or that activity for the sheer pleasure and enjoyment and challenge of the problem itself rather than for some extrinsic goal like someone's offering you a reward or you have an evaluation hanging over your head. When we talk about where motivation comes from, there are two types of motivations, intrinsic and extrinsic. To do something because you're intrinsically motivated means you do it because you find it interesting and enjoyable. That contrasts with extrinsic motivation, which means you do it because it leads to some separable consequence. I think a lot of my motivation comes within me because honestly, when people try to motivate me in art, um, in class, or with a project, it normally doesn't work as well because it's not something that I can easily pick up. It's, it has to be something that I've really kind of ingrained in my head and I motivate myself and I really do feel like something would be important to continue doing it. That's the real reason I do it. it I find it makes life much more enjoyable to find a different way to do something. Um, and sometimes that different way works and sometimes it doesn't, but then uh, you have to find another way to do it then if that didn't work. So I really feel like that's what motivates me to be creative is just to enjoy things more. It makes it a lot more uh, fun, really. And I would say that some of that comes from within and sometimes that comes from maybe someone else isn't having the best day or I know that if I can use that creativity and make them laugh or write something that they're going to enjoy reading that uh, or listening to, then that's going to make them have a better day too. Most of the people I spoke with thought their creativity came from within. That is consistent with the research. Joseph Renzulli and others found that passion for something produces what is known as flow. Flow is a mental state in which a person performing an activity is fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement, and enjoyment in the process. It gives you this feeling of more than accomplishment. It's like euphoric almost. When I'm being creative, I kind of feel like I am not like everybody else. I feel really like once I start a project or start doing something creative, I feel really inspired to finish it and I'll feel very motivated. So 
once I start doing certain things, then I'll just want to keep doing them and I don't want to stop. I just, I mean, it's probably the most amazing feeling when I feel artistic and just ready to create. It's almost unexplainable. When I'm drawing or when I'm painting, it's like my hand just kind of takes over when I'm, you know, creating and it. It's almost like I'm feeling, like I, I'm thinking nothing. There's no skepticism. There's no, this needs to be better, that needs to be better. Everything just flows together perfectly and it's just, it's amazing. That seems to be a consistent theme throughout. Does that mean creative motivation can be influenced by teachers and schools? In his autobiography, Albert Einstein talks about the fact that even though he loved science from the time he was a little kid, he lost his taste for science when he was an adolescent because of the school experiences that he had with science during that time. He was in kind of a strict militaristic school and he really hated having to sit there in lecture and copy down whatever the lecturer was putting on the blackboard and then memorize it for the exams and regurgitate it uh, by rote memorization. He said that, that this coercion was so distasteful to him, and he used the word coercion, that he lost all interest in scientific problems for an entire year. Now this is somebody who from the age of five loved science. His father had brought home a compass when he was a little boy, and he looked at it and was absolutely fascinated. What is this? How does this work? What makes it move? Fortunately, his loss of interest in science didn't last longer than a year. But if that person who was so passionate about science could have his interest undermined by the school environment he was in, by something about that social environment, how much more might the rest of us be impacted, um, ordinary kids in school? Originality and usefulness are always judged within a specific social context. Um, it could be a third grade classroom, it could be a corporate boardroom, it could be a soccer pitch, it could be your own kitchen. Um, but there's always a social context and creativity is unique in that it's one of the few psychological constructs that's both cognitive and very environmental. I feel like in sports, with soccer, especially because I play soccer, um, when your team is all working together, you all have a flow and you're all creatively working to achieve the goal, which is putting the ball in the back of the net. Whenever you go into like the career field that you choose, you're going to want something to set you apart from everyone else. And typically that is creativity. You, you have to learn to channel it because there's people that want to be like pilots or like engineers and they would need to channel in into engineering or aeronautics or something along those lines so they just need to learn how to effectively use their creativity to accomplish what they want. It seems the type of work people participate in can significantly influence their creativity and the type of work really doesn't need to be all that complex. Mihai Csikszentmihalyi found that tasks that were too simple or too difficult for a person's skill set will cause them to lose interest. However, when the skill and challenge level meet, a person experiences flow. There are also other simple elements that can influence creativity. When you have any experiences that lead you to feel positively, um, to, to have positive emotions and strong intrinsic motivation, that's going to make it more likely that you'll be creative in what you're doing. And if you're teaching kids, putting them in that kind of an environment, leading them to have those kinds of experiences, will enhance their creativity. And when creativity happens, people feel great. They feel like they're making progress. They can see that they've done something nice, something interesting. And that leads to even more positive inner work life, which in turn leads to even more positive um, experiences with creativity. So for people that you're managing or people that you're teaching, whether they're little kids or, or high school students or adults, think about how you can support their progress 
every day in something meaningful, in something that they can enjoy, something they can engage with deeply, something that they feel matters. So I think one of my main people that help me show how creative I am is Mr. Cockrum because he like helps me, he helps me like, he's on me all the time about my YouTube channel. So it kind of is like, I kind of get annoyed that I'm getting like agged on, but it helps me like, okay, if I do it, then he won't do it. Like say anything to me about it. But then also I love doing it. And so it's just finding time for things like that. But it can definitely be influenced uh, through teachers, through family, through friends, through school. Um, if you know a student were to be going to a school that was very strict and not very open, then I don't think a student would have an easy time learning how to be creative. Versus if a student went to a more open, free uh, environment in a school, I feel that they have more room to grow. Schachter, Thum, and Zifkin offered a list of effective practices for teaching creativity. They are using strategies that include brainstorming, redefining a problem, or generating multiple ideas. Opportunities for choice and discovery in the content and expression. Reinforcing intrinsic motivation. Encouraging students to be non-conforming. Developing an atmosphere of inquiry, curiosity, and self-directed learning. Addressing real-world issues and problems. And self-evaluation. Conversely, there are five practices teachers do that limit creativity. There are at least five surefire killers of intrinsic motivation and creativity. Promise someone a reward for what they're doing. Set up an expectation of evaluation. Limit their choices. Limit their time. Or breathe down their necks, peer over their shoulders, and engage in surveillance. Unfortunately, this list of recipes for how to kill intrinsic motivation and creativity reads almost just like the recipe for how to set up the typical classroom. If you think about, we want to measure something to see who gets into college, who gets into grad school, who gets hired. We're only looking at this when we use the current measure. There are all these other things, some of it's creativity, but also leadership, resiliency, emotional intelligence, all these other characteristics that we just don't take into account. Do you think it's important for students to learn creativity because everybody, like especially in like high school, everybody's trying to find their way and if you learn that you can be creative and do something and be successful at something you love, then that is it doesn't even have to be creative, but in general, then especially if it is creativity, then you can like go and do something that you love and not like something you might not like. Scholars, scientists, engineers I know have to have a creative side in order to find a different way to uh, make it over obstacles because if you had a set formula for every single thing and that set formula didn't work, you'd have to be creative and find a way around that. The research is showing us that creativity can be taught. It also shows us that creative achievement is important for future success. Students are even telling us that creativity is important to learn in school. Then, why does our current school environment in the U.S. not value creativity in the classroom? This is one reason why I believe that some core issues like measurement, which sound kind of dull, are so important. Because if we don't measure something, we don't value it. Unfortunately, until society values creativity enough to measure it, our students will continue to suffer. Well, how do you feel when you are not being creative? Lazy. <laughs>